what we are trying to show here is uh, uh, an application of Rao stability criteria to actual flight dynamics problem trying to derive some analytical criteria for instability. So this work was done by Phillips. So what he wants to do is he wants to find stability analytical form uh, formula for stability criteria right using Rouse uh, Rouse uh, criteria for stability. So what he uh, assumes is aircraft is rolling you know, aircraft is in steady roll maneuver so here rates are not zero like the case that we have seen earlier so rates are involved here and the equations of motion are coupled so you start with a 6 degree of freedom equations of motion and after making some more assumptions so for example now what you will do is you will take this aircraft equations of motion and then linearize the equations right and afterwards he made some assumptions so one is this steady rolling roulette is no constant and this is not small because we are talking about steady roll maneuver so this we not is not small but p naught is constant so that p dot is 0 b this inertia term which is cross inertia term is small and can be neglected C flight velocity is constant okay he further assumes that uh, the damping terms are 0 and some other terms as well so cmq is 0 interestingly he drops this equation so that you will not see the rolling moment coefficients so the whole objective of doing this exercise is to only show you the usefulness of rouse criteria so we don't go into details of this right so now he defines uh, the two frequencies corresponding to short period modes and the dutch roll mode in terms of whatever parameter is parameters are left now okay. so omega n sp short period mode frequency dutch roll mode frequency is given by c 
So, <coughs> this I y 1 is I y over q s c bar ok. This q is the dynamic pressure. So, after uh, uh, dropping couple of equations you know, for example, I think it dropped uh, uh, this rollet equation and uh, uh, he also drops the the V equation ok. So, we have 6 equations here uh, excluding the phi dot and theta dot equations 6 equations here in terms of 3 velocities right and uh, 3 rates and from there he drops uh, the first equation corresponding to this uh, velocity right uh, and uh, this velocity is the u velocity or if you write it in write the equations in the wind axis fixed system then it is v dot. and uh, this equation so two equations actually he drops and he formulates an eigenvalue problem which is after linearizing the equations of motion around the equilibrium state which is which is given by this p naught which constant so this uh, eigenvalue problem is this So, this lambda is the Eigen value Okay, let me read what I have written here. M1 p naught. This M1 is some non-dimensionalized mass num mass. Uh, each of these terms which you don't recognize, they are written in terms of aircraft parameters that you know. So this uh, particular uh, example is from Bandhu Pamadi's book if you want to know more details on this you can look into the book okay. So this uh, uh, matrix is consisting of lambda 4 lambdas right 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we are going to end up with a quartic equation in lambda. So <coughs> you want me to read this. So M1 P0, P0 is the steady roll rate Cy beta minus M1 into lambda 0 minus M1 Cz alpha minus M1 lambda minus M1 P0, M1 0, Cm alpha 0, Cmq C1 minus Iy1 lambda minus P0 
I x1 minus I z1 0 C n beta minus I y1 prime minus I x1 prime into P naught C n r into B1 minus I z1 prime into lambda okay. So what we are going to see is we are going to see uh, a characteristic equation which is looking something like this. So there is a quartic equation in lambda and now we want to use the Rouse criteria. So he actually uses the necessary condition only which says that all the coefficients must be of the same sign right in this equation. So it turns out that A, B, C and D are all positive. So for stability automatically E should also be positive and E less than 0 means we are going to have one or more roots of or the eigenvalues of this equation right with positive real part but for that you need to also carry out the sufficient condition creating the routes array and then looking at the sign of the elements in the first column of the routes table. So we just need to look at what this E is okay we do not have to really bother about, bother about the other 4 coefficients <laughs> let us look at what E is. This is what E is in terms of the aircraft parameters I Y1 which is I Y over Q S into C bar I Z1 prime which is yeah I have written it there into M1 squared this M1 is Okay, so now use this criteria for instability or stability, right? Stability criteria is that E should be positive. 
and for instability it should be less than 0 right. So there are two conditions now the condition 1 for instability so one of these terms should be negative right so one should be positive the other one should be negative condition one is So this is condition 1 and condition 2 These are two conditions for instability. And you look at uh, the parameters that are involved. So parameters involved are inertia terms and the frequencies of short period mode and the natural mode. Right? Rolling maneuver is considered to be a fast maneuver. Okay? and uh, the instabilities are also are due to mainly inertia coupling terms so this we have talked about uh, previously whenever you have an aircraft which is fused as heavy I mean all the masses are concentrated towards the fuselage there you will have instability because of the inertia terms okay. So rightly uh, he arrived at an expression which is related to the inertia of the aircraft and he found some stability boundaries using this criteria right. So what we have done is we have used uh, Rouse necessary condition for stability and trying to find out the stability boundaries in terms of these parameters. So this boundary is defined in terms of this ratio ratio of short period frequency over the steady roll rate squared and touch hole frequency over steady roll at <coughs> squared of that and using the conditions that we have you know, based on the inertia terms and the and these frequencies
right. So now you go back and look at those conditions and you will find out that in this particular maneuver the roll right no steady roll rolling maneuver this is the region where you can have stable flying condition okay. This region is also stable. So region one and two are stable regions. Three and four are unstable flight regimes. And here you will see what is known as pitch divergence in this fourth region 4 you see what is known as yaw divergence okay. So this is the point which separates out you know, whether you are going to see yaw divergence or the which diverges right so if you draw a line through this region 1 and passing through this critical point so passing through the critical points which is lying on the boundary of the two divergent regions if you look at any other line they are passing through these divergent regions right and this line is indicating increasing roll rate so starting from here 0 roll rate in this region the flight is maneuver is stable if you are passing through this then you are going to see in this part pitch divergence in this part you are going to see your divergence right and again in this part where the roll rate is quite high is stable but under some conditions okay. So he could actually infer a lot of things just by using the Rouse stability criteria in terms of aircraft parameters right. So this is one of the famous examples of use of Rouse criteria to play dynamics problems okay. So we are starting a new chapter today so next three lectures will be on this. chapter aircraft response to various inputs right and so some inputs can be inputs which are unknown right. some inputs are known right what are unknown inputs atmospheric inputs right many times you will not have any idea about what kind of wind inputs you are going to see and uh, <coughs> at times also the pilot input right because each one of us will have different reflex systems right the way we respond or the way we move our muscles it will vary from pilot to pilot is not it. So that can also come under this category 
we will not have an exact idea of what kind of inputs actually can come from the pilot himself. So but we do not worry about that right now we take the atmospheric inputs as a known inputs and known inputs are the control inputs right. So now if I know what kind of input I am going to give to my control surfaces for example a step input or you can move your control surfaces in step ramp or you can give a pulse doublet and so on and we want to look at how the aircraft is going to respond to those inputs. So the first case that I am going to take is of the rolling motion and this we have discussed in detail. So if you look at the roll motion of aircraft the equation for the pure rolling motion is given by delta p dot no this is a linearized equation okay so about the flying condition that we have cruise condition from that we give an alarm input right so that we can get into roll right this is from a cruise Now what we are looking at is the aircraft response enrolled to a round input right and this input is not 0 so we are not talking about free response anymore right we are talking about the forced response okay. How do you solve this? So one of the popular techniques to solve you know, such linear equations of motion is Laplace technique, right? So you can use Laplace transform technique here. it works only for the linear systems right there is a linear system so if you have any signal no just any signal ft which is defined for t greater than 0 then you can find the Laplace transform of that right which is written as f of s right s is a complex quantity. Now use this apply it here and you will find no, the standard tables given in terms of what signal corresponding to what signal what Laplace form you can get now table is given it is also easy to find the Laplace transform using this integral it is not so difficult. 
so let me write down the write down this equation in terms of this Laplace form of this equation. And this you can do only when this delta p is starting from zero initial condition. Okay. Which will have in our case, right? We are looking at roll dynamics starting from a level cruise condition, right? So p is zero there, and delta p is definitely zero. Right? Delta p is the disturbance in p. So S minus L P into delta P S equal to L delta A. So relation between the roll rate and the run deflection in S domain is This from this equation. This is the d delta p over dt. Now you can use this formula no, to convert it to Laplace form. Right. So for zero initial conditions, so delta p zero is zero. This is what you will get. Okay. What I want to know is the response with respect to as on input. What kind of input? We can take any input, right? Any form. Let's assume that this. Delta delta A is a step input. Okay. And uh, let's say this is the amplitude of the step input right so <coughs> the function can be written in this form Now I want to find out the Laplace transform of this signal as well, right? So, so that I can write everything in terms of S. Now you can again use this to find out the corresponding function in the S domain, and you'll find that for this function is. A over S. Okay. 
okay so I what I am interested in is finding out what is the variation of this delta p in time So you can use partial fraction method and split this into two parts and now what you do is you take a inverse Laplace right. So inverse Laplace of this returns you the original signal. So first of all what we did we took a Laplace of the signal we found this function f in this domain later on we can take inverse Laplace of that function and find out what this original signal is this is one of the easiest method of solving a linear differential equation wherever you can use this. So now if I do that I can find out what delta p is in terms of time So clearly it depends upon this LP, LP also gives us the time constant right and time constant we have defined to be this LP is usually negative, LP is negative okay so the time constant is positive. So what it tells me is in the steady state delta p is going to approach some value which is not 0 is not it for the unit step deflection in L on not unit step the amplitude of this step input in L on the amplitude is A. Right. So this will become 0 right when t goes to infinity and what you have is this right. What is L delta I? L is Q S into rolling moment coefficient into span of the wing and <coughs> how we get L delta is this
where delta a is in radians okay because I am writing this as a non dimensional unit right so delta a here is in radian lp is Now P has a unit uh, which involves second so I have to somehow non dimensionalize this and we have done that earlier This CLP has no unit. Okay. So whenever you have been given aircraft data, you have to look at if it has unit or not. Right? If has if it has no unit, then you have to take care of this part. So thus TD roll rate in terms of the coefficients is given as this. And many times you will size your uh, L on based on based on delta P S S into two U naught over B. So L on is supposed to give you roll rate, and you will size your uh, size your L on in uh, uh, by looking at this parameter. It's a I think it's roughly of the order of point zero seven to point zero nine. Okay, now let's do an example problem. What you have to remember is when we are talking about uh, this delta p in uh, time, the time response of the roll rate, then you have to find out this lp and not the clp, right? That what the uh, this formula is for actually the steady roll rate, right? If I want you to, uh, if you want to find how this delta p varies in time, then you also have to find out what this lp is. So let's uh, look at one example problem, and this for the aircraft F one not. For A, what we want to find out is the roll response to a five degree step change. In a long deflection, trim speed is given. This is a solved uh, 
example in Nelson what other things are given for this CLP is minus 0 0.285 CL delta A is 0 0.039 S is 18 meter squared and B is 6.7 meter and IX is 4676. So A is 5 degrees, right? A is the amplitude of the step input. In a round, so A is five degrees, which is five into pi over one eighty radians, and uh, LP you can find out using that formula. Turns out to be minus one point three. Per second, so delta P S S is point three one radian per second using that formula, <coughs> and so you you know the time constant from here. Which is 0.77 seconds. So this is delta P S S, right? For five degree Elon deflection at step, and it's going to the response is going to converge to. The steady state roll rate, right? So this is how roughly it will look like. Any question? So we can stop. We don't have any question.